welcome back to SnowRunner, y'all. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a truck that I think a lot of you guys are going to actually be really excited about. Now, this is based on a 05 GMC Sierra single cab 2500 gas. It is very specific, like super, super specific. Now, this was a commission build by Glitchworks for a client, and he stated in the mod page that the client specifically wanted this to be a gas engine based truck, not a Duramax. But again, that was up to the particular person that this truck was built for. And I will say, some of the gas engine trucks from this time period should not be slept on. I mean, especially from a performance standpoint, some of the gas V8s that these things came with can be built to the moon. You can push boost through them. And especially if you change out the, inter like the internals, you can make these things rip, even as a gas truck. So I feel like a lot of the times, the trucks from this era get overlooked by people if they're not you know, a Duramax. Like, sometimes people might say, oh, that's not a Duramax. Oh, I'm not interested. Whereas some other people might say, oh, that's a, uh, oh, that's like a, maybe like a slightly larger gas V8. Yeah, I could stick a turbo and some bigger injectors on that and make, like, bolt loads of power and absolutely send it everywhere I go. You know, like, there, there are so many options for these trucks. You really can build your own kind of like Chevy 2500 Lego set of a truck if you wanted to. But without any more rambling on, let's go ahead and fire this thing up. We'll get it in the garage and we'll see what we can do with it in terms of customization. And then we're going to put it through some tests and see what it's like to drive. It sounds good. It sounds really realistic. It doesn't sound super over the top. And I will say that's another thing that Glitchworks actually went a lot uh, kind of into depth on in the mod page is that this truck is meant to be a more balanced truck than an overpowered over the top truck, which there's nothing wrong with like either way. If you like a ton of performance, that's great. If you like, you know, vanilla game performance, that's great. It's like whatever in between works for you, that's what you should go for, you know? Um, but in this truck, we currently have the stock 5.3 with 330 horsepower then we have a dyno tuned 62 swap which brings us up to 460 horsepower then a single turbo uh let's see single turbo 62 making 600 horsepower or a twin turb ski 62 making 815 horsepower yeah i'm about that I'm about that. You know what's crazy is I hadn't even seen the engine options before I came in the garage, and I was already like, you know, you could just strap a turbo to this thing and make a ton of power, and lo and behold, we get in here, and there's the option to strap either one or two turbos to this 6.2 liter V8, so I'm really happy that I predicted that. Now, gearboxes wise, we got a five speed default, we got a six speed highway, and we got a four speed off road. We're gonna start with the four speed off road and then move to the six speed highway for the bridge jump a little later in the video. Now, we're gonna go ahead and get that installed. Got a few different suspension options here. We got stock ride height, which admittedly looks really, really good, actually. Then we have the six inch rough country lift kit. Then we have the lifted tow package. And then we have the 12 inch extreme lift. So I think what we might do, and I'm a little bit back and forth on this this one kind of sits back a little bit so i may start off with the well i kind of want to be able to look at the largest tire options first but the problem is this stretches the suspension out so much that i'm worried that it'll be too stiff to use so let's go with the lifted toe package for now that actually looks really really good now, your starting tire size is going to be a 33, and you have a really wide selection of tires. Now, if you're familiar with the vehicles that Glitchworks generally builds, a lot of these tires are going to be tires that you've seen before. However, they all look really, really good, and I'm honestly really interested in going with maybe either a 35 or maybe even up to a 43. I mean, depending on how many options we have for bumpers, because if we were trying to put the 43s on with this lift height in real life, we'd have to do a lot of uh, bumper and fender chopping. It's not like outside of the norm to do, but you would still nonetheless have to do it. Now, here we have some chain tires that are going to work for you on snow and ice. Those always look really, really good, and they're really effective. Uh, we're going to go with these GWC MT Pros, which are basically a Mickey Thompson Baja Pro. We'll throw those on there, and then winch-wise, we're going to throw the Stage 4 winch on the truck, and then Gooseneck Hitch. I may go ahead and put that in the bed now. Now, we've got a few different... Whoa! We've got multiple different... Um, like different sets of weights and they're all invisible and you could basically weigh down the front end with whatever type of weight works for what you're going to be hauling so that is an amazing feature got an led light bar we could put up top if we like we've also got a couple of rear bumper options let's see we got a steel bumper 
factory option bumper. Oh, I see. The one with, like, you know, slightly wider steps and stuff like that. We'll do the steel bumper in the back. Fender flares. Eh, I'm not really interested in them. Now, we've got an old school roll bar that we can do. We've got an extended bar and a modern shorty bar. I'm not a big fan of any of those. I kind of like it with just the back of the cab. I know that might be kind of weird, but that's just me. Now, let's see. Grandpa's old bed cap. Uh, we've also got the on-bed toolbox and the in-bed toolbox. We're going to do the in-bed toolbox. Grill-wise, we got a stock grill, a billet grill, and a mesh grill. I'm actually really glad that Glitch took the time to include all of these. Um, that's awesome, especially for like a console-friendly rig like this. Now, snorkels-wise, I will probably go ahead and put one on there. And then exhaust, we've got a single and a dual. I'm going to do... You know what? Since it's a gas V8, I might as well do a dual exit exhaust. Now, bumpers-wise, we got the stock bumper, we've got a winch bumper, brush guard, and stinger. You know, for the actual, like, visual purposes of it, I kind of want to stick with the stock bumper. Normally, I would go with the weighted winch bumper, but I think this time I actually really want to stick with the stock one because I really like the way it looks. Now, wheels-wise, we got a pretty good selection here. And these, oh, those are definitely based off of a real-world set of Moto Metal wheels for sure. Now, let's see. What do we want to run on this thing? So we got some good options. The GWC mode are what I've been running on a lot of glitches rigs lately because they look like methods, and I really like method race wheels. Um, but at the same time, I kind of want to run the, oh, dude, the mode or the process? Uh, I, I'm gonna run the process. I like the process. Now, the cool thing about the process, too, is with it basically being a polished finish, you can run whatever color you want to run on the truck, and it's not gonna make, it's not gonna make the truck look bad with any type of wheel. You know what I mean? Like, if you run a specific wheel color, sometimes, like, wheel colors don't mesh very well, but that's, you know, a lot easier to do when you have a polished wheel. So let's see what we can find color-wise. I really like the blue. The blue really pops. The blue looks great. All right, we're going to go ahead and put beans up there on the dash. And now it's time to take this thing out for a rip and see what happens. Now, Glitch did say that this was compatible with both... Um, both Glitch's Gooseneck Pack and Red's Gooseneck Pack, so if you enjoy hauling with Goosenecks, you definitely can. However, Glitch did warn in the mod page that since this is a little bit more realistically tuned, uh, don't be surprised if it likes to pull the front end up or if it bogs down if you're trying to go up a steep, muddy grade and you have a bunch of weight loaded on a six-unit Gooseneck. It's just not built for that. So let's see. Um, I would recommend Scout Trailers are probably the best uh, for this truck, and it's actually... Oh, it's a perfect height for dubs trailers actually look at that so if you're gonna be hauling something like a mower for example yo dubs trailers are perfect and actually oh dude you could even put like a single unit of cargo on there oh that'd be awesome that'd be so good what about the ba uh the bale of hay oh that's not that much weight yo that's that's actually amazing that's beautiful that actually to me screams realistically usable truck because like it's not lifted so high that it's impractical it's not you know so insanely powerful that like you know that it would kind of live outside of the game balance but it's powerful enough that you can have fun with it it's realistic enough that it keeps you know people that appreciate game balance happy and it also is able to do amazing like role play scenarios like this you know like hauling bales of hay i am already a massive massive fan of this truck and i have to give glitch mad props for it so let's see what we can do in terms of just like off-road ability and let me make sure to not get that sign stuck in my trailer are we diff lock always on heck yeah you know i didn't even put it in low dude i just like i just left it in high and went for it that's amazing i am very happy with that i'm very happy with that i wonder if it'll climb this hill in high with uh, no it will not not with the trailer anyway i'm sure it would climb it by itself but like with that trailer i feel like we may or may not have uh gone a little bit over the truck's intended limit uh when hill climbing with a trailer attached so let's go into some mud and see how it reacts to that look at this interior what do the horns sound like actually very like typical realistic horn though i mean it makes sense that's probably most likely what this truck would have in real life look at this textured seats seat belts 
cup holders, all the switches on the dash. Dude, I am very impressed. And actually, it's doing a really good job in the mud, too. Well, until we got into the really deep stuff, but that makes sense as to why it would slow down a bit in here. But it's not, like, stopping. It's still going. It just slowed down a little bit, which makes sense. Again, within the realms of realism and game balance, this truck slowing down in the mud with a load definitely makes sense. Let's see if we can run some low plus. It's not complaining about it too bad. It works. All right, diving back in. This is going to be a little bit more challenging on it. I'm not going to go through the middle of this bog. I'm going to stay towards the side. Because if I stay towards the side, it'll probably be a much higher chance of us making it across. But this is the kind of scenario that you're going to find yourself in, in, say, a campaign map or a objective-based mod map with a truck like this. And, you know, the fact that it's not stopping and we're keeping that forward momentum is huge, huge for this truck. And it really means that overall, you could use it for scouting, you could use it for light recovery. I wouldn't use it for heavy recovery, but light recovery and light hauling, which is exactly what the real world version of this truck was intended to do by Chevrolet. Come on, come on, come on. Oh no, 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 no. Well, if you're in the shallow mud and you throw it in high with a little bit of weight on the trailer behind it, you will start to sink. I mean, that's not surprising. It's it's not surprising, and it's not. It's honestly not bad because it again it keeps it within those um, those bounds of like game balance and realism that I know a lot of people are looking for. But let's see what it does through the flex ramps with a trailer behind it. It's got a good amount of articulation considering the fact that a this is not the highest lift kit, and b it's. IFS, you know, it's not uh, intended to be like a super flexy package, but hey, if you have to tow some cargo through some uneven terrain, you definitely wouldn't have any issues with it. I mean, look at this. The center of gravity is set really, really well, too. Keeps the truck's center of gravity nice and low, nice and stable, nice and well distributed across all four wheels. Yeah, I'm very impressed with the way this thing drives, behaves, looks. It, it, it really is, like, it really is up there, honestly. All right, now let's do the dips obstacle with a trailer. The dips obstacle with a trailer is probably one of the harder obstacles that we will do in this uh, in this test. And for vehicles like this, well, not even vehicles like this, but for vehicles in general, doing the dips obstacle with a trailer is one of the hardest obstacles they will do because A, they have to negotiate the dips themselves, and B, they also have to keep the trailer from both getting stuck and tipping over. There we go, find a spot. Not bad. Yo, this is not only, not only is this saying a bunch about Glitch's truck, but it's also saying a bunch about Dubs' trailers too. Find a little bit of traction. It's got just enough wheelbase, just enough that I can have contact on the front and rear axles while I'm negotiating both the, uh, like both of these ruts. Oh, that's awesome. It's, it's the perfect wheelbase for this. It really is truly the perfect wheelbase for this. And that's not something you find super often. Most wheelbases get hung up in here. Hey, I guess that's one of the advantages to single cab long bed, right? All right, let's go ahead and pull up right here. Now, here comes the fun part. We're gonna do a repair and refuel. We're gonna go for the highway transmission. We're gonna hit start to make sure everything refreshes and then tap the clutch to make sure we have the six speed now. And now, <laughs> We get to take off for the bridge jump. Oh, look at that! We got a freaking sunroof? Luxury! Oh my god! You can even see, um, like, an actual modeled out, or textured, rather, tow haul button on the column shifter. That is so wild. There's, like, a modeled out hazard lights button above the steering column. Yo, this truck is so detailed. You could legitimately just replace a vanilla game truck with this, and you would be set. All right, let's make that left-hand turn. Here we go. Building up that momentum for the bridge jump. I am not lifting. I am not lifting. I am not lifting. No way. All right, full send. Full freaking send. Will we hit sixth? Yes, we will. All right, here we go. Boom. And oh, my God. Uh, that is one of the most composed controlled easy landing bridge jumps I have seen in a very long time and that is yet again another massive prop 
to glitch in the way that they designed this truck. Wow. I... I don't know what to say other than the fact that this thing is incredible. But if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you guys next time.